course, when you think about the set and the design, will you have tables, will you have chairs, will you have PCs, what will you have? You need to think about, are you going to use the location of the studio or on location outside or in a classroom? Of course, I've seen many examples. It, it was common for many years that teachers would just record their lecture in the classroom. Uh, it's a little bit hard because it's too long, it's too boring. People already fall asleep in a regular lecture. If you're watching it on video, I think it's even harder. So people have changed a little bit to think, well, I need to go into the studio and shoot the video. You need to think, is that the right way to do it? Or should you go outside and maybe do some B-roll or some pickup shots or maybe have your main discussion outside? That's okay too. It's up to you to think about it beforehand not to come to the studio and say, well, uh, give me some idea, what should I do? Because that's already too late. Set dressing includes the things that are on the table, that are inside the room, on the walls. All of these things are the dressing. It's what makes the set look what it, what it looks like, gives it its look. And of course, part of that is clothing and props. So what kind of clothes that you're going to wear and what you're going to actually look like in the video. So in this shot here we have an example of our talent. She's reading from the teleprompter and she's chosen this outside setting which is kind of a, a, a fall, leaves falling from the trees and she has her, it kind of matches her clothes. She picked it for this reason. So it's a little bit of good planning. She's all ready. The teleprompter is really a big help though to help her just read the words she wants to read. Remember, when you're inside the lab, there's just so much equipment all over the place. We have all of our lights, and then we have all of our um, wires and microphones and our teleprompter. All of these things, our cameras, can get in the way. Without planning, it's going to be very hard to not waste your time. So how many cameras will you need? What camera angles are you going to use? You need your storyboard, and I often, I don't know why, but when I talk to students about storyboards, I say, bring me a storyboard, show me what you're going to do. So when I see it, I can help you to change it, to make it better, show you where things are wrong, where things are right. People really hesitate, or really resist making a storyboard, and I just don't understand why. I think they believe they need to make some kind of beautiful picture or painting or something, when nothing is further from the truth. A storyboard can be as simple as stick figures. Okay, I'm going to stand here, and the frame is going to shoot me in this semi close-up shot here, and then Bill is going to walk in here. That's all you really need to do. And that's shot one, and then shot two is this way, and you draw another stick figure. That's all you need, but for some reason, people just really get upset about this and refuse to do it. I think it's just laziness. I think the idea that you need to think about it carefully and really plan what you're going to do is too hard for most people. They just want to go in and say, well, I don't know what to do. I need to see the equipment first. I need to see the room first. I need to see what I can do first, then I'll think about what to do. And that is totally opposite of production. It should be first you think, then you come in. If you find out the equipment cannot do what you want, then we can modify what you want change it maybe to be a little bit different, but not the other way around. So, you know, storyboards, what can I say? You have to have a shot list, plan, a plan with a shot list, and a shooting schedule. So a shot list is, of course, uh, who's in the shot, what's the angle of the shot, what's the equipment you need, and then a schedule, what is the time, the days that you're going to be shooting, and then you need to try your best to stick to it. Of course, we have cameras all over the studio, and it would be nice just to go online, check out some of these cameras beforehand. Google it, look for some YouTube videos, there's tons of them, at least get familiar. When somebody comes in the studio and they say, I don't know anything, what's this camera do, tell me, um, that's not easy to get the production done. So we really need to take the initiative and learn a little bit. It looks complicated, it kind of is complicated actually, but I think you get the idea. You need to really learn a bit on your own first. Pressing the shutter speed turns on this section here, which you can see. And 
Then there's a little wheel here, which is used for all the menu systems on this camera. It's very, it's common in the Sony cameras, they use this wheel. You turn the wheel and you can adjust that setting now. So I'm gonna turn it down. I'm gonna turn it up. So you can see the numbers here. I'm going down to four and then I'm going up to 15, 30, 60. Okay, so what this number means is, if I turned it to 30, that means in one second, the exposure is going to be one, well, the exposure is gonna be 1 30th of a second. Now, 1 30th of a second would mean 30 exposures in a second which sounds a lot like 30 frames a second, but that's not what, what it is. So it's a bit confusing and it's, sometimes I even say it wrong. When we talk about how many frames per second, video is going to be 30. Film is gonna be 24. So in our video, we're gonna be shooting 30. However, each one of those frames, 30 in a second, is going to get exposed to light. Now if each frame gets exposed to 1 30th, as in here, 30, that's per second, 30, 1 30th of a second of light, that means for the whole time it's exposed. However, if we change that setting to be, let's say, 60, 60 means that it's going to be exposed for half of 30, and it's 30 frames a second, so it's going to be exposed for half of that time, so 1 60th of a second. It's letting light, less light in. So even though you have 30 frames per second, the exposure time is 1 60th of a second, which means less light is coming in. If I go ahead and change it again to 90, that's 1 90th of a second, or 100 1 hundredth of a second, 1 25th of a second, 1 80th of a second. Do you see how the picture in the screen is getting darker and darker? And that is because it's showing me I'm going to be letting less light in. So if we come back to 30 and then we go to 60, 60 is gonna be half that amount of light coming in. And then if I go to 120, that's gonna be half of that again, half of the 80. So uh, half of the, well, that'd be 160 would be half of the 80. So right around there, 180. So you see it gets dark very fast. Now, why would you want to have a very fast, why would you want to have a very fast shutter speed? The shutter speed is fast because you want to capture the action very clearly. Or, for example, if we're using the green screen, we want to make sure that when somebody moves, the green screen does not show up in our keying. If somebody's moving around very quickly, then the green will show through in the green screen. If you want to hide that a little bit, then you need to reduce the amount of blur. So when somebody moves their hand, how fast their hand is moving will create some blur. And if they're moving very slow, it will be no blur. But here what you're doing is you're changing that amount of light coming in, and if you capture it shorter amount of time, then the picture is gonna be clearer. The problem is you reduce blur, but you need to increase your amount of light. So usually in the studio, we go with 60. That is to say, the amount of light per frame is going to be 1 60th of a second of the exposure. Okay, so that's the shutter speed, super, super important. If I press the button again, it turns off. If I press the button again, it turns on. And I think it has an auto setting. It looked like it just jumped to auto. Is that gonna stay manual or is that auto? I gotta check that out. But anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so we've come back to some of the really important things, of course. The front end here is very important. But then down here we have what I think are the most commonly used settings in the studio. That's gonna be the gain, the white balance, and the shutter speed. These are super important. We see the menu 
wheel here, but then here are the controls for things that are not related directly to using the camera right now, they're related to the menu. So let's go ahead and press the menu button, and what are we going to get? We get our menus here. Press it again, the menus are off. We have a display button, and the display will change what's showing on the screen. So if you want to show more or you want to show less, then you just press the display button for quickly changing that. We have a thing called picture profile. And picture profile, you don't need to worry about too much because what that does is you set all your settings, which is quite complicated, then you can save them into a profile. You can put that onto a memory card and later you can use it again or you can move it to another camera. And then the last button here is status check. So if you press that button, it's supposed to give you a very quick look at your most important settings, for example, your audio. But we're not using audio, so we don't have anything happening there. There's no audio coming in, so not a big deal. So we won't be using that very much. So again, we come back to the most important part of the camera in the studio, this front end, and then these settings here. The gain, the white balance, and the shutter speed. Those are super important. Okay, so let's go ahead and look into the menu then. This is the complicated part, and every menu system is going to be different, so keep that in mind. Press the menu button, and I use the wheel to move around. Well, we have our camera settings that you may be familiar with. Your iPhone or your Android phone may have some settings like this, and certainly if you have a camera, your camera will have many settings that look just like this, although the details may be a little bit different. The first settings are related to the camera, and if I press camera, I press the wheel in, you can see the first so selection there is gain. If I press that, you can see H, M, L. What is the HML? It's right down here in the bottom of the camera. HML, LMH, right there. So here is where I set what is L and what is M and what is H. So I can go up to H and I made H 0 dB, I made M 3 dB, and I made L minus 6 dB. So minus 6, minus 3, and 0. I put it as low as possible. When I go to the 6, I press the button again, and I can go up or I can go down. And look, minus 6 is the lowest. That's as low as I can go. That's what I want, the darkest possible for low. Okay, that dark helps me get a little bit more quality. So there are other settings here, such as white balance preset and white balance outdoor settings and white balance temperature setting. You can see I've set my white balance for 4500. That's the preset. So when you wonder how do you make the preset here on the camera, the preset is made inside the menu here. And then you have a few other settings that you can turn on or off. But I think inside the studio, these settings you would not be changing because they're already all set. Now, if you go out into the field, again, for students, we loan you the lower, uh, smaller, lower end camera that's not so difficult to use. The next part is this input, output, and actually this is telling you how you're going to do your recording. And here is where you actually set how many frames a second you're sending out, and the quality that you're sending out, the resolution. Here we can see that it's set for 1080 for 30p, that is 30 frames a second. And again, that's not the same as shutter speed. Shutter speed is not the frames per second. Shutter speed is the fraction of a second you're allowing light onto the sensor, so different. And then you have some other things like audio, and then settings that you set things such as the screen display, what do you see on your screen. So 
for example, I can change things like the shutter display. I can change things like the LCD brightness. Again, studio probably would not be changing these things, so best to leave them alone. But good to know about them. We have some details here about something called time code. That's for professional video recording where we want to record some special code. We also have some network settings, which probably in the lab we're not using right now. And then you have some others. And look at these others, for example, you have buttons. So you can actually go into the buttons and you can say, what is button one? What is button two? Remember, my button two is a color bar. So if I go to color two, a button two, and I push that, I'm going to get a color bar. So that's how you set that. You set that with those assign three, assign four inside the menu. All right, and then you have a few other details. I'm sure you've seen something like that before. We jump back to our main menu. All right, so. Again, that's kind of the way the camera is laid out. The most important is here, and even here, most of these things you will not be using inside the lab. The most important parts to be very careful of are the lens, of course. Don't be touching the lens with your finger. And we do have a lens cover. Make sure you always close the lens cover when you're finished in the lab. Focus, zoom, and your f-stop, your aperture right there. Gain, white balance, and shutter speed. Those are the keys. It looks very overwhelming, it looks very intimidating, and it looks very confusing. If you don't understand something, go to YouTube. There are many lessons. Even if you don't find the exact camera like this, you'll find a camera very much like it, as long as you stick with the same brand, in this case, Sony.